In our last lesson, we talked about the three connectives, negation, conjunction, and disjunction. In this lesson, we are going to talk about conditionals and biconditionals. Let P and Q be statements. A statement of the form P implies Q is called an implication or a conditional. This is always true except when P is true and Q is false. You call this part here your premise or antecedent. And you call this your conclusion or consequent. Let us construct the truth table. It says here that this is always true except when P is true and Q is false. So here, when P is true and Q is false, this is false. But for the rest, it is always true. So always remember this. A conditional is false when the premise is true but the conclusion is false. For example, our premise is that the integer 3 is odd and our conclusion is that the integer 57 is prime. Let us determine the truth values of P implies Q and Q implies P. The integer 3 is odd. The truth value of this is true. The integer 57 is not prime. This is false. So therefore. P implies Q is false because the premise is true but the conclusion is false. However, for this one, the premise Q is false but the conclusion is true. So it's FT. So therefore, this is true. Again, remember that a conditional is false when the premise is true but the conclusion is is false. Take note that a conditional may be true even when there is no connection between the antecedent and the consequent, the premise and the conclusion. The reason for this is that the truth value of P then Q depends only on the truth value of the components, not on their interpretation. So for example, if sine pi is equal to 1, then 6 is prime. You really have no connection between the sine of pi being equal to 1 and 6 being a prime, right? However, you can still determine the truth value of this one depending on the truth values of its components. So, for this part here, sine pi is equal to 1, that is false because sine pi is equal to 0. 6 is prime, that is false. We have false, false, so therefore the implication is true. Remember that if you have an implication, if premise, then conclusion, this will only be false when you have true false. Next, if 13 is greater than 7, then 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. 13 is greater than 7, that is true. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. We have true, true, so therefore this is true. Next, if pi is equal to 3, definitely this is false. The, sec the conclusion is Paris is the capital of France. This is true. We have FT, so that still makes the entire statement true. Let us consider this second row here. Why is it that the implication P implies Q is false when the premise is true and the conclusion is false. To better understand why implication is defined as it is, we can think of an implication as a promise. Suppose that I tell my son that if he cleans his room, then I will give him ice cream. P is my son cleans his room and Q is that I will give him ice cream. So we have P implies Q. Now let's look at the rows here. Suppose that he cleans his room and then I give him ice cream. So he will be happy, right? He gets an ice cream. Suppose that he did not clean his room because he's sick. So I will not 
penalize him for that, so I decided to still give him ice cream. Will he get mad at me? No, he will still be happy because I gave him ice cream. Now, suppose that he did not clean his room and I did not give him ice cream. Will he be mad at me? No, because in the first place, he did not clean his room. He will not be happy. Of course, he, he doesn't have an ice cream, but he has no right to be mad at me. When will he be mad at me? He will only be mad when this happens. When he cleans his room, but I did not give him ice cream. If this happens, then he will say that I am a liar, right? Because I, this statement will become false. So does that make sense? Why is it that when the premise is true, but the conclusion is false, that's the only time when the implication will be false. Let us again take a look at the truth table here. What happens when the premise is false? P here is the premise. Look at this one. When the premise is false, the truth value of the conclusion doesn't really matter because automatically the implication will be true. But if the conclusion is true, let's look at this. The conclusion is true here and here. Take note that the truth value of the premise doesn't really matter. Here it's true. Here it's false. In both cases, the implication will automatically be true. So again, when the premise is false, automatically the implication is true. When the conclusion is true, automatically the implication will be true. Let us consider this statement here. If Isaac Newton was born in 1642, then 3 times 5 is equal to 15. Now, I really don't know the year of birth of Isaac Newton, but I do know that this one here is true. I know that the conclusion is true. So, we're here. So, it doesn't really matter whether this is false or true. The entire statement will automatically be true. So, for example, if this is false, false true, the statement is still true. If this is true, true true, the entire implication is still true because there is no way that we will get a TF. Here are some ways of expressing P implies Q. So these are the common wordings. If P, then Q. You also have Q if P. So take note, Q if P. This is the premise. P implies Q. You also have P only if Q. So take note that if you have only if, the premise is the first statement and the conclusion is the second statement. But if you have the word if only, the premise is the second statement and the conclusion is the first statement. What else? P is sufficient for Q. Lastly, we have Q is necessary for P. Let us write the following in the form P then Q. Take note that for these three examples, it doesn't really matter whether you know the definition of this or not. I am not expecting you to know the definition of these things. I just want you to write them in this form for you to be able to determine what is the premise and what is the conclusion. A set S is infinite if S has an uncountable set. So take a look at this. You have the word if. If we take a look at this one, if you have if, the premise is the second part. So therefore, the premise is this one. S has an uncountable subset. Then, S is infinite. Next, S is compact is sufficient for S to be bounded. We have sufficient. Look at this one. P is sufficient for Q. If you have sufficient, that means that the first part is the premise. So therefore, if S is compact, then S is bounded. Next, a necessary condition for a group G to be cyclic is that G is a billion. Where is that? Q is necessary for P. 
What is necessary? You can write this as G is a billion. Is a necessary condition for a group G to be cyclic. Again, a necessary condition for group G to be cyclic is that G is a billion. So the necessary condition is that G must be a billion. We now have it in this form. Q is necessary for P. What is now the premise? The premise is the second part. If G is cyclic, then G is a billion. What happens when we reverse the premise and conclusion of an implication P implies Q? You call that the converse of the original implication. So for example, what is the converse of if 5 is an even integer, then 7 is an odd integer? Simply switch the premise and the conclusion. So therefore, it becomes... If 7 is an odd integer, then 5 is an even integer. Let us determine the truth values of this. 5 is an even integer that is false. Automatically, the entire implication is true, right? When the premise is false, automatically the implication is true. Next, if 7 is an odd integer, this is true. 5 is an even integer. This one here is false. So therefore, this statement here is false. So notice here that the original implication is true, but the converse is false. Meaning to say they are not the same. They have different truth values. We will talk more about this in our next lesson when we talk about logical equivalence. Original implication and its converse may have different truth values. Let us now go to biconditionals. The biconditional, we read this as P if and only if Q, is a statement that is true if P and Q have the same truth value and false otherwise. Mean to say it will be false when they have different truth values. So therefore, what is the truth table here? This is true because they have the same truth value. They, they are both true. On the second and third rows, they have different truth values. So P if and only if Q will be false here. Here they have the same truth value. So therefore, this is true. Let us determine the truth values of the following. The number 2 cubed is equal to 8 if and only if 49 is a perfect square. 2 cubed is equal to 8. This is true. 49 is a perfect square. This is true. They have the same truth value. So the biconditional is true. The number pi is equal to 22 over 7. This is false. If and only if square root of 2 is a rational number. This one here is false. They have the same truth value. So therefore the biconditional is true. Next. The number 5 is an odd integer. This is true. If and only if 7 is an odd integer. This is also true. So therefore, this is true. Here are some ways of expressing P if and only if Q. So you can also have P if but only if. Recall that but is the same as and. P is equivalent to Q and P is necessary and sufficient condition for Q. Let us express this symbolically. A necessary and sufficient condition for the graph G to be a tree is that G is connected and every edge of G is a bridge. What will be the two components here? A necessary and sufficient condition for this part. The graph G to be a tree and then this is the second part, is that G is connected and every edge of G is a bridge. So, our first component here is that G is a tree. And then we have if and only if. The second part, G is connected and, so you have conjunction there, and every edge of G is a bridge.
We are now done discussing the five logical connectives and here is the summary of the truth tables of the five logical connectives. Let us use the logical connectives that we have studied in writing the propositional form of the following. Suppose B is a fixed real number. Take note here that I defined what B is. So therefore, this is already a statement. Okay, you might say that this one has a variable, so it cannot be a statement. It is a statement because I already specified what B is. We will talk more about this kind of stuff in our succeeding video lecture. So let's look at this part. If B is an integer, then B is either even or odd. So the form is B is an integer. Then this part here, B is even or B is odd. Of course, you can make this P, this is Q, and then R. So you have P, then Q or R. But I prefer to write it in this way. Next, suppose A, B, and P are fixed integers. Look at this one. If P is a prime number that divides A, B, then P divides A or B. We have a conditional here and this is the premise. And this is your conclusion. How do we write this symbolically? How do we turn this into simpler components? P is a prime number that divides A, B. We can say that P is a prime number and P divides AB. That is your premise. For your conclusion, you have P divides A or P divides B. Or P divides B. In the same way that there are order of operations, we also have order of connectives. The ordering of the connectives when there are no parentheses given will always be according to this order. So for example, let us insert the implied parentheses. We always start with negation. This negation only works for Q. So I will put not Q there. We do not have and, and then we have or. So for or, you will just join it with the closest to it. So that's not Q and then R. And then you use implication. So you have P implies this whole thing. And then lastly, you have this biconditional. Let me just write that. I think this is better. I no longer wrote the parenthesis here. It's already obvious. And then for this one, we start with the negation of Q. So that's only for the negation of Q. I will no longer write the parenthesis. We do not have and, but we do have or. So we have P or, not Q. And then, what's next? This one, the conditional. So that means that you have R implies S first. And then lastly, you will use this one. 